So what's going on here? Something very clever. There's a fan inside the mouth of this large fish, and every now and then the fan turns on and the mouth opens and pushes the little fish away. There's a sail on the back of that small fish, and every now and then it doesn't turn itself on, and so it's able to grab it and not try to eat it. Very, very clever design by Taiwan from about 20, 25 years ago. Taking a lot of upkeep, but it's a wonderful thing to show people. So the flavour of the week is fishes, fish, fish toys, and there's a lot of them to show. Here's another one which the Japanese came up with a few years ago, where you put a coin in, I don't need to put the coin all the way in, and it then does a very sweet little movement up and down of the little boy the dolphin, and the, the seascape turns around two little rollers and makes it appear that there's actually a real vista of the sea going on underneath. And after it's played us through a tune, it turns itself off. Very nicely made. Japanese quality always is excellent. And it'll wind up and away it goes. Here's an exciting one, also another chasing toy, which is, well, wind up this one, not unlike the first one, which is battery operated. You pull this piece out, and that winds it up, and then it chases after it and goes, oops, let's try again. Oh, and gobbled it up. Let's try it again. The Willy the Whale, it's called. This one's trying to escape. When he goes, he goes, oh, and he gobbles him up one more time. Oh, that's nice. A very clever idea, that. It chases after it and then gobbles it up. There's some battery-operated ones with water in it, which are very beautiful, and these have now been superseded by some very, very superior ones. But this is quite nice for, what, the 1980s this was, the early 80s. There's a little motor inside, and there's a, a tiny little magnet on the bottom of the small bit of bait that the fish is holding, and that tosses around as the magnet underneath whirls and whirls around. And there's two versions of this which I like, and both really do the same thing. But I'm very well aware that nowadays there's some much more sophisticated versions where the fish itself has got a minute little motor and does the most amazing stuff in a water tank. So these ones are a bit awkward because you've got to fill them with water when you've done that. So they are very nice, they'll go on for hours and hours, just giving you a little bit of background movement, which is nice, I think. There's a very large one over here, which is battery up, which is wind up, this one here. It goes on the wall, when you pull it, that's all it does, I'm afraid, but it's just a very nice little bit of um, Japanese automata and a beautiful box it comes in as well. I have three versions of that, the fish, of course, which is the flavour, but also a ship and a plane as well. So some of the automatas are very large and very cumbersome, but some of them are very small as a mixture of the two. Well, there's one more large one to show, which I like, because again, this has been vastly superseded by a much better version, but this is the first version that came out of the soft pliable rubber one which when it's turned on and you make a noise the tail moves back and forward. It's the same motor that moved, made that gun and the little heart throb and things. It's, it's an acoustic one. But it's made on a nice strong board which fits on your wall like that. But the better version which I'll try and get is Billy the Bass sings and does various little actions. But this is the very first version that came out around about 1981 I think it was. There's lots of balloons, of course, around. There's an example of a balloon there, for, which, which has got helium in it, and uh, that'll float. There's some very interesting versions here, which... This is a South American invention. It's got very, very flexible spine to it, and the reason is, down the centre of it is a piece of leather. And then the wood which is fixed on, it's then slotted all the way down, slot, 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 all the way down to make a little gap, and that allows the thing to move so far and then stop, so it won't go any further. So the effect is exactly what you get, actually, with a fish spine, if you are manipulating a fish on the table before, before you cut to eat it. It does that movement, very, very flexible at a certain point, and then locks in tight. And it makes a wonderful action, highly realistic. But wood and leather, and it makes a superb arrangement. There's some pens which came out, and it's very interesting to see the development of them. The very first pen I've got is this one here. This came out about 1982. It's quite crude, to be honest. It's difficult to hold, and it's, uh, you know, it's OK, but it's not that interesting, to be honest. But it's, you know, it's, it was interesting to see over the next 20 years how they came up with something that's only appeared in the last two or three years, which is the same thing. It's a fish pen. You take off the top here and you can write with it. And this feels good in the hand. And the finish and the quality of that is just superb. So there's about 25 years of development from one to the other, which I think is uh, very interesting to see how they're going. In between those two years were these extraordinary ones from Japan, which I picked up many, about 10 years ago, where when you turn it on, the barrow comes out here. But the jaws of the thing open and close at the same time, which is unique.
I don't think it's ever been done before. There's another version of the same thing. There's a lot of puzzles out there which are fish-based. This is a, a nice one of a puzzle padlock from India. It's got a key to it, and to unlock it, you have to turn the key and it would jam. So what you then have to do is you have to push the eye here. This is a heavy brass body and a heavy shackle as well. And if we turn it like that, it opens like that. But it's difficult to spot the eye because it's quite well concealed. There's quite a number of fish puzzles, puzzles which are locks or assembly puzzles, that are all based on the fish theme. Oh, he's still going. The food pyramid, which I've had for many years now, has a shark swallowing uh, a smaller fish who's swallowing a little minnow, and that makes a kind of food pyramid, but all made of soft, what they call plush, plush toys. And it's a nice little demonstration to kids that the bigger and the smaller fish is eating each other. This is one that's just reappeared after about 20 years. It's quite a sweet little toy. It's only made of cardboard. It's got an elastic band in it. And the idea is you gently touch it down there. Then you, oh, what caught it the first time. Look at that. That's brilliant. Let's try one more with the other one. It's got a bit of elastication in it, and it's got a little bit of, of uh, double-sided tape there and there. And the idea is to have the, have the, bait, have the little fishing rod above it push it down, and if you push it too hard, it never, it never comes up again. Right, let's try one more turn. Oh, missed it that time. Clever idea, though, isn't it? Now, one of the oldest toys I ever came across, which has got a fish theme to it, I think came to the 1950s originally, was this one here, which is the old fortune-telling fish. This has never disappeared from the shops, do you know? I see this in crackers year after year after year. It's made of some kind, kind of very light plastic. I think the same thing they make films of, probably. And it relies on the heat of the hand to make it curl over and then tells you your fortune. If it's motionless, you're dead. If it's moving head, you're jealous. If it's moving tail, it's indifference. Head and tail, you're in love, etc., etc. A lovely idea, that. So that's probably the oldest of the fish toys I've got in my collection. The most recent um, is somewhere around. Let me just see. I've got one more, which is a large something other fish. I've got... Oh, there you are. <laughs> My friend the shark, beautiful monster, radio controlled, battery operated, and hydroelectric because the tail flips back and forward just like a real fish does. So many of these automatons which a fish move by having a little propeller blade, but this one doesn't. This actually sticks to the original way in which a fish propels, it, propels itself into water, which is a flapping fin at the back. And this goes beautifully. Atta boy. There's another fishy story.